Now it gives me great pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker. Her bio is in your event program, so I won't uh, dwell on that. She has a ton of experience. But did you know that Karen works for the FAA because she defied her father? Her dad had served in the Army and at the FAA for 42 years. His advice to her when she graduated was to go change the world, but don't try doing it working for the government. And like many kids, uh, she took that as a direct challenge and immediately bid on the job at the, at the FAA Tech Center. And they got to work together for a whole eight years before he retired. That is so wonderful. So wonderful, Karen. But now he's put to work babysitting her kids so she could be here today. I wish he could be here to see you, but we'll have it on tape. Anyway, um, what's also interesting, something that is not on any biography you'll read about Karen. Two special things. One is a stupid human trick where she can dislocate her shoulders voluntarily. Now, if anyone who's ever done that, like myself, it hurts. I wince when I think about ha that happening many years ago. So that is truly remarkable. The second thing is she's got amazing endurance. She hiked a glacier in New Zealand. That is very impressive. So, okay, superhuman, please come to the podium and give your speech. Karen DeMeo. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here today. I don't know if I'm superhuman, maybe I'm a super drone. Um, but uh, wow, drones and robots, what exciting times we're in. Uh, I think one thing that I like to do uh, when I talk about this topic is sort of get to um, get a feel for the audience. So I'm going to ask you a few questions first, and if you could just raise your hand so I can see where, where we're at, where maybe um, in this half hour or so that we have that I can tailor what I'm talking about. Because honestly, when I was asked uh, to speak by the New Jersey Tech Council, I said, how much time do I have? I want like three or four hours. And they're like, no, you're only getting, <laughs> you know, we only have 30 minutes or so. There's been so much going on in this space. So, all right, so let's see a show of hands. Who in the room actually owns a drone right now? Awesome. Okay. Uh, who in, is anyone in the room work in drone manufacturing? How about um, drone tech? Anybody doing development? Oh, okay, that's really good. Uh, how about, is anyone from the military space? Do we have any operators or pilots, government? Okay, cool, we got one. Um, how about, does anybody here have a, um, uh, a commercial license to operate drones right now? Because you actually, there is a commercial license that you can get, or commercial permission. Anybody have that, commercial business? perfect opportunity for me to tell you what's going on in that space. Um, and it's a really great time for that. Okay, who then, last question, who wants to own a drone here? All right, we're going to have everyone's hands up, I think, by the end, because it's such an exciting thing to talk about and to think about. Um, and so, uh, what are the th people have been saying, I'm just off of a conference uh, last week, and it and it, it was really interesting. I was the only person from the FAA there. There was about 3,000 people there. And uh, I was the only one from the government side. It, it was geared towards the commercial aspect of what's going on um, uh, in the business right now. Uh, there's been really an inflection point and an explosion there because there's been a lot of progress made by the FAA that's allowing that. And so I'm really glad that you're all here so that I can bring you up to speed on it and then you can give you, I'll give you a little flavor for it and then you hopefully will go get excited and want to start some businesses in the tri-state area because, uh, you know, we really like to see some economic growth here in that, in that sector. So a lot of people have been saying that Drones and robots have the potential to change the world. I agree. I consider myself a drone enthusiast. Um, and they also have been described as disruptive technologies. I also think that's true. If they're not right now, they're going to be. Um, I think what's really interesting for me working for the FAA for my, almost my entire career, I've been there for 25 years, and a third of it, eight years I've been working um, in, for UAS, unmanned aircraft systems what they call them in the FAA. I, I call them drones. But um, 
humans have always had a fasc fascination with flying, always, since we've been roaming the earth. Um, right now, as a society, we have a very uh, interesting hypnotic allure to our tech gadgets. When you put those two things together, it's almost, Im it's almost impossible with flying and tech gadgets not um, to see what I'm seeing is that there's become an addiction to droning once you get started, once you put one of those things. I meant to carry one actually up with me uh, to, the, to the podium. We have them at our table. Um, but, but it's been a really interesting time for us. And, you know, there's a lot of talk, there's a lot of buzzwords in our tech community now about big data and perfect data and sensors and clouds, the Internet of Things. Um, augmented reality, um, even outpacing virtual reality, uh, moving from 2D to 3D in robotics and also in um, uh, displays and printing, things like that. Uh, there's been an explosion of tech in our lifetime, especially in the last few years. We're also in this age of personal storytelling, um, a video age. Talk to any kid with a phone, and if you've, if you've ever been on YouTube, um, move over Hollywood, because we all want to star in our own, in our own motion pictures. Um, oh, thanks. Um, oh, he brought me one. He brought me one that matches my outfit. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, so, you know, with all that going on, it's, we're really ripe and poised to introduce this technology and to get some commerce moving in that area. Um, <clears throat> before I get into some of the details, I want to tell you a little bit more about how I, working for the FAA, got in, into working with unmanned aircraft systems. So about um, nine years ago, I was working on a, a Skunk Works team, a special projects team, on a completely different topic. My specialty area has always been in modeling and simulation. Um, and you know, at the time, we were kind of winding down what we were doing. We were going to get put back into our old into our organizations, but we were going through a reorg, and at, and at the same time, I had also uh, been uh, blessed with um, about to have my second child. So I went to my boss, I said, hey, look, you, you know, um, when I come back from taking some time off, I'd really like to have some kind of new and interesting challenge, because me and being bored is just not two things you ever really want to put together. It doesn't usually end up well. You can ask my dad about that. Um, and then, uh, so she said, great. So I, ca I came back from maternity leave, and uh, the day I got there, she said, wow, we just had this fascinating meeting at headquarters, and they're talking about this thing called UAS. Nobody really knows what it is, but they said it's new and challenging, so I immediately thought of you, and I said, I'm in. And here I am eight years later. Uh, it's fascinating. I didn't even know what UAS was. had zero idea and when, when we started um, at the tech center where I work down in South Jersey. Um, it was me and one other guy, um, and now... Uh, it grew really quickly, up to five people, ten people, um, a dozen people, four dozen people, and now actually there's people all over the tech center in South Jersey in all different programs working to support the integration of unmanned aircraft or drones into the national airspace system. In fact, I brought a key piece of our team has come to support me. They're sitting over there, and I invite you to go meet them and talk to them because I'm only going to be able to skim the surface of all the cool stuff that we're doing down in South Jersey, but they're going to they're going to be able to tell you they're the ones that are doing the really fun stuff. Um, and you'll see our drones are a little beat up. And uh, when I get to that point, I'll tell you why they're beat up, because we're, we're doing some uh, drop testing with them to assess impact and, uh, of, of what's going on. So um, anyway, back to, uh, back, back to that. I, so I've been there. Uh, for a third of my career, it's fascinating. I intend, hopefully, to retire still working on drones because it's, I think it's the most fascinating thing that's ever happened to aviation in our lifetime. It's a new frontier, um, and it's really exciting even to work on the government side of it, uh, which has been very challenging for us uh, to be part of it. So um, I think right now I'm going to ask you to engage again, and I'm going to ask everyone to, for the moment, just in your own mind, don't shout it out because there's a lot of people. <laughs> um, think about your industry and your job and think of this uh, sentence because I do this a lot with people and I do this a lot um, when, I'm, when I'm mentoring and doing STEM activities. Think of drones plus my industry or my hobbies or my likes equals what? 
Um, <clears throat> that's the space that we're in right now. People all over the world are doing that. Um, innovators, entrepreneurs, um, kids, my kids. I uh, brought these home, and they're like, Mom, you finally have a cool job. I'm like, I've been doing this for a long time. They're like, no, but you brought a drone home. And the minute that they touch them, they're fascinated now. Um, the school's already called me. They're like, can you come and talk? We didn't know you were in drones. And I said, sure, you know, it's great. Um, it, it's a really good space to be there. There's a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of business opportunity in drones right now. And, I, and um, it's, it's a really good time to think about those things. I'm a scientist. I did my own little study. Uh, last night because I was thinking about, well, how am I going to explain um, or how am I going to illustrate some of the really cool things that can be done with it? And I thought, okay, we'll just ask a few people. So I did, it was an unfunded study, so I just called up my brothers and sisters. <laughs> I have four of them. And uh, the first one I called, my brother, he's down in Florida, and he works in um, sports auto. Uh, in the racing, you know, Indy. I know we have some NASCAR people here, my team too. And I said, you know, to, I said, um, we'll call him Bob because because that's his name. And I said, Bob, um, you know, what do you think you would do if we gave you a drone? What would you do in your business model with a drone? I said, you got one minute to answer me, and you get, only get to say one thing. And, and he's like, oh. And then two seconds later, he said, I know exactly what we would do. We use helicopters, and we use blimps to video um, the races when we have them. And it's really complicated, and it's really expensive. And you know things go wrong, and it puts people in danger, because you know you have people flying and, and all those things. How cool would that be if I could just you know use a drone? I'm, he'd probably have to use one a little bit more robust than this. But I said, perfect. Thank you. I'll talk to you later. Got to go on to the next subject. Um, I called my other brother. He works in the Philadelphia area. He's an insurance. And uh, I, I asked him the same question. I said, what would you do in an insurance field with a drone? And he's like, what? What are you talking about? He's like, I just, you know, I want to fly one recreational. I said, no, think about your job. And then uh, he said, oh, you know what? Actually, during Sandy, they had a lot of claims from Hurricane Sandy. Um, he said, we certainly could have used a drone because we couldn't get in touch with anyone. We couldn't get down to survey anything. We couldn't monitor. We couldn't do any of those things. He said, you know, if we had a business with drones or incorporated, or incorporated that into our model, wow. Okay, great. A lot of people are talking about that. When I was at that commercialization conference, there was a lot of insurance people there. Um, they're also there for another reason, because people are talking about, okay, well, these are aircraft. They've been defined by law as aircraft. doesn't matter right now how small they are. They're actually aircraft and regulated um, legally by the FAA. Um, and so, you know, how does that work out in the whole insurance space, not only of insuring the aircraft, because some of them are really big, the size of of jet airplanes and some of them are really small but also you know there's potential for things to happen and we all know some things have happened but we're not going to talk about that we're not going to talk about the bad stuff today um, but so okay there's insurance um, I called my youngest sister and I said what you know what would you do uh, right now she she has five children and she's she, she's an entrepreneur um, but she's her husband is handling the business and she's handling the hard business the family and uh, she said what well, I, you know, I don't know. I, I, I said, you know, what are your challenges? And she said, well, I want the kids to ride their bikes, but I can't, you know, take care of the baby and, and cross them across the street. And she said, well, you know, can they be a crossing guard or could I have a drone nanny? I'm like, okay, a lot of people are talking about having a drone in your own home, you know, a personal assistant drone. That's definitely a little bit further down the road, but it's not out of the realm. They're talking about that in Silicon Valley. And then I got to, oh, sorry, I have a lot of brothers and sisters. Um, and then I got to my, uh, my oldest sister, Denise. She's a New Jersey teacher. Yay for all the teachers that are out there um, in teacher space. And uh, I said, you know, I gave her the same question. I said, what would you do? And she said, all right, first I want to talk to you about your bio. And I said, oh, here we go, because she's always correcting my grammar. She goes, I want to know if you're a government drone, because this is government drone enthusiast in my bio. And she's always has to do this. This is just what big sisters do. Are you a government drone and you're enthusiastic about it? Or are you from the government and you're enthusiastic about drones? And I said, you know, that's exactly why I studied math and science. And you can keep your English. Note to self, English teachers are not getting drones for a long time. Um, but I mean, the bottom line is we actually had a really great robust discussion about using drones to teach STEM in education at all levels, um, from young children all the way through university level. They are a perfect 
tool to do that. They encompass all aspects of science, technology, engineering, mathematics. And here's the thing, when we put them in the hands of children and adults, the same, they go wild crazy about them because they're cool. Um, back at that same conference, I met a couple of people that are working in this space and they're starting to use these as teaching as teaching tools, and they're also doing research with them at the same time. Um, there's a company called She Drones that's targeting bringing women into the tech field because that's always you know, been a challenge. We do, oh, we've always been sort of hashtagged outnumbered um, in, in the tech area. So it's nice to see some of that focus going there. And they said they opened up you know, uh, a camp, and within one hour it filled up. They had to shut it down after the first day because they had so many people sign up and they really had never intended to do it. You know, they didn't know what to do, so they're, they're adding more classes and now they're turning it actually into a business. Um, so there's a whole lot that you can do with it. And I get really excited about the education piece of it because that's always near and dear to my heart. I always like, you know, to give a little bit back. I feel very fortunate in the cool things I've got to do with my life. Um, as far as the Technical Center goes, I work at the Technical Center down in New Jersey, in South Jersey. Um, we're co-located by the Atlantic City Airport. We have 3,000 people that work for the FAA. They're about half our government and half our contractors. A lot of people don't know that. We are the country's, the FAA's federal laboratory for research. We have other mis missions as well, um, test and evaluation, second level support, but part, the part that I work in is the, is the research world. And um, we have thousands, we have uh, thousands of square feet of laboratories, air traffic control laboratories, and our job has always been to look and to figure out how to change things in the national airspace, how to work with air traffic controllers and modernize uh, aviation. Um, there's never been a bigger challenge, in, in my opinion, since I've worked there, um, than now with drones because it's really so different. Um, we are actually working a lot in the university space uh, at the tech center, a lot regionally, we, we've been working with um, we've been working with Rowan. We've been working with Rutgers. I'm from Rutgers. I'm a Rutgers grad. Uh, we've also uh, we've also collaborated with NJIT. Um, we've had discussions and work um, closely with Stockton. We've talked to Temple. We're looking in things there as well. So um, you know, we do a lot of partnership work as the federal agency with academia. And, uh, you know, I invite you, if you're interested, come to our table and talk about it if you have some ideas or some areas of collaboration that you might think you, uh, you'd want to work with the FAA on, because we're always open to that. Um, all right, so back to a little bit about robotics, aviation, and changing everything we know about flying. It's also changing everything we know how to research flying. Um, and when I say that, I really mean it, because at one point I thought I was a subject matter expert in what I did until drones came in and I'm just like, huh? You know, what do we do? They're so different. Um, we've been doing the same thing for, for, for decades in aviation, um, and it really had us uh, spin our wheels for a little bit, and we realized we had to create new models, and you know, we had to bring in new technologies. But what's really interesting, as we're moving towards the clouds, um, instead of, this is, become, this is coming from an, an is, industry that was focused you know, on aviation and transportation into um, cloud architecture and sensors and data. Um, we're talking about things on a daily basis, words that were never in our lexicon before, like geofences and cybersecurity, um, autonomy. That's just not something we talked about in aviation before. Um, it's great, I mean, the world's changing, we're gonna change with it. Um, I guess there's that saying that everyone likes change but no one likes to be changed. We felt that quite a bit at the FAA um, in the eight years that I've been working in the space. But what's really been interesting for me is I've always worked with aircraft, manned aircraft manufacturers, with air traffic controllers, pilots, um, with that uh, kind of entity, and now we're talking to movie makers and farmers, um, policemen, firemen, Google, Amazon, Facebook. I mean, those are the people that are operating or want to operate now in the national airspace system. So it's really, really changing things. Um, so it can suffice to say that it's definitely different to work in the FAA these days. Um, as far as the FAA goes, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we're doing. And again, I'm going to invite you to the table. We're uh, really excited to tell you details of things, but you know, I don't. I got to watch my time too. Someone's going to have to give me like a 10-minute out. Um, 
I got five? Okay, I have five minutes. Okay. So here's, here's uh, some of the things we're working on. We have six test sites um, across the United States. We have, uh, they're in Alaska, Nevada, North Dakota, Texas, New York, and then of course we have one in Virginia, Maryland, New Jersey, and you're going to hear a little bit about their challenges and some of the work they're doing there. We have a center of excellence for UAS that we just stood up. It's being, um, head, uh, it's being led by the University of Mississippi, and there's 12 universities that are part of that. Um, one of them happens to be Drexel, so we'll be doing a lot more work with Drexel in that space. They also have 100 industry partners, over 100 industry partners. They're going to be doing a lot of research for the FA in, in integration. We have a program in the Arctic. Uh, that was one of our early programs. It was part of the law that came out that they're doing commercial operations uh, permanently out there, and they're helping us research how to get UAS into the national airspace system. Um, so there's a long history. We also work very closely with NASA. They have two huge programs going on out at NASA. They have the UAS and the NAS program, and they have something called the UAS Traffic Management Program, where they're trying to uh, looking at some future concepts of how uh, we're going to have a system, uh, air traffic system, in in low airspace in what we call Class G, where a lot of commercial operations want to happen right now. That's where the Amazons and the Googles want to operate initially, um, but but a whole lot of other commercial entities. And then internally at the uh, at the tech center, we have strengths and modeling, simulation, flight demonstration, engineering work. And so we've been doing a whole array of uh, work in areas of detect and avoid um, in, in um, uh, sensor fusion for surveillance. Uh, just this past week, so we have some of our drones, and th th they're going to lo look a little interesting because we've been doing some drop testing with them. We have a drop test facility that we used to use for manned aircraft. It sort of went to sleep for a while because we haven't used it for that long time, but we just turned it back on, and uh, just the last couple of weeks, we have a whole bunch of drones that we've been uh, assessing um, um, impact on, and that's to answer some of the questions that are coming out about, about the small rule that's that's um, hopefully going to come out next year, that it's going to open up the market some more. We work on some of the standards committees. There's a lot of standards committees to be involved in. There's aviation rulemaking committee. There's the industry uh, forum that looks to develop and provide recommendations to the FAA. So we're involved in all those things down in South Jersey at the Technical Center. Um, but, you know, one of the one of the things that I really wanted to talk about, and I'm definitely going to run out of time, but um, <clears throat> Chris Anderson, who is the CEO of uh, 3D Robotics last week, he was a keynote speaker, and he said something that really was interesting to me. Um, he believes that increasingly people are thinking about drones as smartphones with propellers um, rather than airplanes minus pilots. Um, and there is a whole shift right there. Um, they're, you know, they're very forward thinking, um, but that is, to me, I'm like, wow, that's interesting, you know? Um, and we're going to see where that goes because just this week, I think, there was some press releases from Verizon about 5G networks. And that opens up, you know, a whole lot of things are going to change. And so when you talk about, you know, melding um, aviation into things uh, like the cloud and, again, with these data, data and sensors, because that's really what droning from a commercial perspective is all about, you know, uh, there's a lot of change in the future. People are using them for precision agriculture, 3D inspections of buildings. They're using them for public safety. You're going to hear a little bit about that from the panel. Emergency management, inspection of bridges and windmills, um, surveys of ecological shorelines, you can name it, monitoring of everything, wildlife, cars and um, parking lots, uh, traffic, um, and then videos of everything, the whole news industry is interested, you know, the movie interest, industry is interested, the individual person is interested in that. So I think we're going to be launching to a whole new technical level when it comes to drones. There's still the military operation, operation side of things that's been going on for a long time, you know, that, that came into um, pop culture, you know, in movies after we started using them, um, you know, after uh, 2001. And that industry is still booming. But the commercial side is, you know, is starting to uh, hit a point of inflection, I think, and it's coming up. Uh, here's probably one of the more important things I want to let you all know, as many of you, I'm sure, are business owners or are thinking uh, maybe in the space of innovation and entrepreneurship. And so what's been going on in the last year is really what has opened the doors um, 
for, for people, for businesses to be able to go out and use drones. Um, there's been some law and there's been some technology advances. There was uh, the FAA Modernization Reform Act of 2012 uh, mandated the FAA to integrate unmanned aircraft into the NAS. And so from that came a, uh, a proposal for a small rule, which is now in consideration and that should be coming out sometime what I'm reading, because I don't know, I'm not on that side of the house, is by the end of 2016, maybe early 2017. But in the meantime, there's been something um, called a 333 exemption that you can petition for from the FAA as a commercial business where you can operate um, and, and make money. Uh, last year, this September, this time last year, uh, was the first handful that we gave out. We gave them out um, to the movie industry, I think because they asked first. So, People keep asking us, why did they, I don't know, I don't work on that side of it. I was just watching the news like everyone else. And so, you know, a handful of companies were able to legally go out there and make some money um, using drones. And then between September and February, 20 more uh, companies or individuals were given um, permission to do that. And then something happened in, in February, the rule came out as a proposed rule. And then all of a sudden, FAA changed their processes and they really started ramping up on these 333 exemptions. In March alone, they put out 20. Um, in April, they put out about 150. In May and June, they put out 200 plus. Um, and then just in July and August, they put out 300 plus each one of those months. Um, then today, I checked today, um, and up to today, already in the month of September, they've granted 230. So when you add all those numbers up, and those were approximate numbers, um, on our website today, and you can go to faa.gov slash UAS, and there's all sorts of information on there, and this is there too, they update it daily. There's 1,546 um, people or, or entities that can operate commercially. Um, in the United States right now. That's huge. That is a gigantic leap for us from just a year ago where there was nobody essentially that could do that. So that's opportunity. Um, there was an analysis done of the first thousand a couple months ago um, and, I, and I just went in there to see, you know, what, what are we looking like in New Jersey and Pennsylvania and New York? And so of the first thousand, I wish they had, you know, I wish they were doing it daily, but they're not, and I didn't have time to go through all of them. But of the first um, 1,000, um, there were 15 um, exemptions granted in, for, for, um, for owners in New Jersey. There was 31 in Pennsylvania, and there was 26 in New York. I'm going to presume that there's quite a bit more in the next 500 that came, but I'll also tell you on Monday there was 11 granted, and of the 11 that were granted, one was for a New Jersey company and one was also for a Pennsylvania company. And anyone, you can all go on and see that. It's all there. The FAA has put that transparency out. You can even see their their petition and, and the grant uh, that they received back. Um, so this is potential for economic opportunity for the entire country, but also for, for our region. And the reason I'm you know telling you about that is because what I've been finding out is a whole lot of people People really aren't aware. That's not really splashy, headliney news, um, but that opportunity is out there. Uh, I am not an expert in that area. Uh, you know, I do the research that supports the regulatory people that are granting these. But the best place to get the information is on the website. There's a phone number to call, and they've been very responsive. Um, and the time to get those exemptions are really shrinking. Um, when the small rule comes out, things will change, um, and you know there'll be bigger opportunity. But I think the competitive space will also get a lot bigger too. So really, these people that are getting in there now get some early adopter benefits. So um, you know, uh, the last things I'm going to wrap it up because. Like I said, I would have talked to you guys for hours if I had the opportunity. But you know, where do we go from here? There's still there's still a lot of work to be done on the Hill. There's still a lot of work to be done in the FAA. Um, there's still a lot of work to be done with our partners and with industry. But we're definitely moving forward. Um, we're also moving forward um, in the research arena, and we're doing a tremendous amount of work down in South Jersey. And we're really proud of that and really excited about it. But you, as a potential drone community, um, there's things that you can do to be involved. And to stay um, on top of things, you can you can join um, associations. The biggest one out there is the Association of Unmanned um, Unmanned Vehicles Systems International (AUVSI). There's a local chapter. I think um, we have the president of the New Jersey, Pennsylvania. Where's Mr. Schumann? Isn't he the president? I thought he was president. Okay. Um, there's also one in New York. 
Uh, you can join those chapters. They're very active and they're very informative. There's also the Academy of Model, um, of, uh, Model Aeronautics, AMA, um, for the hobbyists that want to fly. And there's all kinds of different coalitions that you can also join. So my advice to everyone is this. Um, if you start flying, because you can now, uh, educate yourself because you don't want to be the one, right? You don't want to be the one, trust me. Um, there's, there's a lot of educational information on our website. There's no before you fly. There's apps that you can use that can help you out. I suggest that you go look at those. And I want to say, you know, there is early opportunity now. And uh, um, I know that my colleagues in FAA are working really hard and we're going to have these rules. Um, in the meantime, let's focus on what makes sense, right? Um, let's focus on what's good for America. Let's think about what we can do with drones for good. Uh, let's go out and um, get energized about uh, how we can um, improve quality of life with these technologies, with robots, with drones, with all the things that you know we're, we're getting exposed to in these exciting times. So I'm going to close with, uh, with this. Um, I enthusiastically encourage you to get up and drone. Um, but I'm also going to say, if you drone it, you need to own it. And you also want to be educated, you want to be legal, and most of all, you want to be safe. So I invite you to our table. We'll help you out with any of those things. I really appreciate being here. I don't know if there's a lot of time for questions, but I will be here all night. So you can come ask me questions over there. I hope it was interesting. I hope it was informative. And I really, OK, you want to take two? That's fine. Oh. While we're trying to detect, this is um, this is a parrot drone. It's called a Bebop. It's really fun. Hello. It's just a few hundred dollars. We have a, quite a few of them over at the table that we've been working with. Do you have it? Yeah. Okay. All right. First question. Try to make sure they don't turn that on. I'm holding. Hi, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm uh, Peter Jing from Rutgers University. Uh, I have a question about COA. I actually had a very bad experience dealing with COA for the last, uh, last one year, uh, trying to get that for my first drone. Uh, I, I know there's a lot of updates coming out uh, over the last few months regarding COA. Um, if, do you have any latest information on uh, kind of uh, the latest updates on that? Well, that's a fantastic question. And I'm going to tell you, unfortunately, that's not one I can answer. It's, I'm not in that. I'm not on the safety side of the house. I don't work on the side that processes COAs. Um, but I'm sure if you've applied for a COA, or you've been in the process, or you have one, um, they've, they've been pretty responsive at, at our headquarters. So I'm just, I'm, I apologize, but I'm going to have to refer you to them because that's not my area of expertise. I, would, I don't. Yeah. Another one. Right here. Sorry. Hey there, quick question. So sure. in internationally, are there other countries that are more open in terms of their rules and regulations around allowing drones? And if so, you know, what countries are there? Are they and are they further along with what, um, with, with using drones for uh, business purposes, for instance? Okay, so um, there's a lot of countries that are, are um, that are operating drones right now. Again, that's, I, you know, I do research inside in the FAA. Uh, the only thing that I'd be able to tell you is, is, you know, the information that I'm reading. So it's, all I can tell you is yes, there's other operations going on in lots of other countries all around. But, you know, our space, everyone's airspace and everybody's rules are different. And so that's, you know, it, even if they're doing it right next door, um, it, it doesn't mean it's going to be the same or translated to us. But that's really a question that I, that's not my domain. It, I'll tell you what I can answer. Anything about research, anything that we're doing um, at the tech center, anything along those lines are, are, would be really good questions. What do you think, Jim? One more or are we, one more. I saw your hand go up actually earlier, so it's you. What is, what is the, uh, 
uh, action of progress uh, with respect to equipping uh, drones with transponders so they could be mainstreamed into air traffic control. Okay, so um, there's what I can tell you about that is there's actual lot there's actually a lot of research going on in that area. Um, there's I, you know I can't give you a specific time or deadline, but but I, but what I will tell you is that there's a lot of people looking at that technology and looking at um, whether that's going to be helpful in that space. Our team has, uh, we do have some people working in ADSB on our team, so if you want to come to our table, we can talk to you about that specifically afterwards, but you know, I can't give you an answer. There's no answer to that yet.